New GAN 356XS Special Edition. GAN will literally find any excuse to release a new cube, and they know that no matter what it is, I'm just going to get it and unbox it and be a little bit excited. Wow, there's a little piece of dirt. I feel ripped off already. Oh yes, super smooth, but really, really weird to use. I think I'm just really not used to this. I see a GAN cube and I think it's the 11M Pro just in my head because that's the only GAN cube I've been using recently and that one is very different. This GAN XS isn't too different from the original. It has primary internals and you can see it still has the magnet settings. And underneath the core, everything should be the same. And of course it comes with the customization stuff in the box, which I have talked about in the review. Apparently the only difference between this and the regular XS is the primary versus black plastic, which really doesn't make much of a difference, at least for me. Maybe you can feel the difference. For me, the only difference is I kind of like the black contrast a bit more as I recognize the colors. Other than that, it should be the same. It may not sound the same just because one's broken in one's not. But the GAN XS is a cube I really like and last year it was actually my main as you can see from the JPerm edition. It's not my main anymore and I think the GAN 11M Pro is better but there is a reason you may want to get this. The price did go down from $60 to $50 on the special and the regular edition so I mean it's cheaper than before but it's still not very cheap. If you're willing to spend this much, the XS is a great cube, but I don't think most people would like it more than the GAN 11M Pro, which you can set up to still be quite fast and have it be super stable just because of the corner to core magnets, which are exclusive to this cube and were not in the XS. Oh wait, the special edition actually comes with one more thing. It's this. Okay, lots of cubes I could look at next. I'm gonna go with the sandwich cube. Look, it's a sandwich. This one is a sandwich gear cube or a gear sandwich cube. Wait, burger, burger. If you don't know how a gear cube works, when you turn it, the gears start to spin. The turning speed is actually different for each layer. So if I'm turning this layer once, the one in the middle actually doesn't move quite as fast. So it can be very confusing to solve if you have a normal gear cube, but this one just comes back to normal because it is a sandwich cube, which has far fewer different pieces. I was actually also sent a regular gear cube, except not exactly regular. This is a mini gear cube. So I have another one here, which is the one I used to have, and it is slightly bigger. So this mini cube is 57 millimeters, which is closer to regular three by three size. And I am not gonna try and solve this because it scrambles, it scrambles a little bit too much. And I, okay, I have solved it. I'm very proud to say I have actually solved this one in a different video. However, I, um, spoiler alert, I didn't know how I did it. So I'm not gonna scramble this one. But I think I am gonna try scrambling the sandwich cube just because it looks like it should be a lot easier. Um, I, I, I may eat my words in a moment. Okay, I'm kind of forgetting how this works, right? You have to turn 180 degrees at a time or something. Okay, this is like almost accidentally solved again. I completely don't remember how to do anything. Like I don't remember a single thing that I figured out as I was doing the other gear cube. Right now I'm trying to get uh, the red. Oh, I got the red side. Um, let's, hmm, okay. These need a twist. I wonder if just doing this will twist it. Kind of. Oh, that was easy. Okay, so that was fun. I actually really like sandwich cubes just as a concept. I actually have this Monster Go sandwich cube from a different video. And if you've seen it, you'll know why I like it so much because you can just basically do CFOP and solve it in like two seconds. So despite how simple they are, sandwich cubes are one of my favorite puzzles just because speed solving wise, they're actually really fun to do. But then there are puzzles I don't like to do. Four by four. Just kidding, except not really kidding. I don't like four by four, but actually this is not a four by four. This is a bandaged four by four. It's actually called a puppet cube. And I'm gonna quickly take a look at how this works, but I really don't expect to be able to solve it. This is gonna be interesting. How this works is you have certain turns you can do depending on the situation, but you can't always. So, okay, we have a lot of just like big block pieces, but some of them have these extra pieces. So let's see, uh, right now, Right now, the only turns I have, whoa. Whoa, what? Oh, I was not expecting that. Oh, we can probably do it here. Ah, oh, this is giving me a headache already. Actually, just looking at the pieces, I don't even think this is a bandaged cube. I was wrong. Yeah, okay, forget that I said that. This is just, what? I am constantly being surprised with this. Okay, when you do that, you can then turn this and there are pieces on the inside you just can't see. This is why I don't like stuff like this. <laughs> it is it is too complicated. I, I really don't like having invisible pieces. That would really mess me up. Oh, 
Oh wow! No 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 no! No, we're bringing we're bringing this back. Whoa! I solved it. Haha, <laughs> so smart. This is actually ridiculous. I might make a challenge to try and solve this myself. Although I suspect this may be the hardest puzzle I ever try to solve if I even attempt it. Oh wait, there's actually one more. Okay, um, I'm, I'm gonna say this one's easier, but I can't say for sure. How does this even work? Okay, let's turn it. So same idea, it kind of like cuts in a way you don't expect it to. Um, and then, okay, how would you turn these inner pieces? What do they... What do they do? So if you do a quarter turn, then it actually lines up this way still, and you can turn this side. Whoa, that's really misaligned. Um, can you do anything from here? Not really. So I guess, <laughs> turn the inner pieces. Oh, the inner cube is aligned. Uh, I was not expecting it to be able to turn this way. But what can it even do? It just gets stuck. Yeah, I can't actually do 90 degrees in either direction here. So I don't think this is, a real thing you can do. I may be wrong. So if I go like that, then... Uh, nope, 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 nope. Okay, we're gonna dial it back and play some basketball. This is, this is just great. Wait, no, come on. This is not what a basketball looks like. A basketball is not just supposed to look like a pumpkin, it actually has a pretty unique design. I don't know, maybe basketballs look like this somewhere in the world. Leave a comment if your basketball looks like this. But they actually got the texture sort of right, as it's kind of bumpy on a basketball. Okay, let's uh, scramble this up. Of, of course, that did nothing. It's gonna be fine, probably. This is like maybe gonna be one of the easier puzzles I have. There are so many identical pieces on this. Okay, actually, leave a comment if you have a basketball that looks like this. So this should be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm just matching lines here. So this is gonna point right there. I'm just making a cross around this one. And uh, this is going to, I'm gonna first line it up with the center here and then put it in like that. And there's one, okay, there's the cross. For a corner piece, if the line points this way, I guess that's the bottom of the corner. So that's the bottom. So I'll just do that. Oh, that's flipped. Wait, no, that's not flipped. That just doesn't belong there. And for the rest, I think I'll do a keyhole. So I'll just find sideways pieces and move them in like that. And uh, here's here's a sideways piece. Wow, that one's a little smudged. And okay, uh, there we go. There's F2L. And for last layer, I just need to orient the pieces. So this one's misoriented and this one and this one. Uh, all the edges are fine. Well, you can't even flip an edge. Okay, this is um, this is really stupid. It's a really, <laughs> it's a really stupid looking puzzle. <laughs> okay, there we go. There's the basketball. These don't really line up well. I think I could go around finding exactly where they belong, but I'm not gonna do that. This <laughs> this is ridiculous. Yeah, a lot of this sort of stuff just because they didn't draw the lines perfectly, but it's such a small difference that like I don't feel like that is part of the puzzle. Like even when it was good, how accurate really was it? Oh man, this is really gonna bug me, but I could just like not look at it for the rest of my life. So I don't really like this puzzle, but we're gonna see if it at least functions like a basketball. I'm gonna see if it bounces. Next, we have a surprising budget two x two to five x five line by Dian Chang. Okay, let's start with the three x three. So I think Dian Chang has actually been making cubes for a long time and uh, they used to have a good cube, I think, but I wasn't really around for it as I was busy using a Rubik's brand back then. And also, what the heck? Well, don't judge a book by its cover. Let's just start. Whoa, that feels kind of weird. Jeez, that's, that's a lot of friction. I wonder if this is lubed at all. It looks like they tried to lube it, but didn't really see if it got lubed. Let's speed up this bad boy. I think this has gotten a lot more bearable, but it's still not very good. Okay, it's even really weird to recognize as I'm solving just because of the way the centers are like that. And I don't know, it, it shouldn't make a difference, but for some reason, for some reason it does make a difference. I just got a PLL skip. Okay, so I can do finger tricks and algorithms on this, uh, not not amazingly. So like, nothing wrong with this if you actually use it as your first cube or something, but I wouldn't recommend getting it. If you just want a good cheap 3x3, the magnetic or even non-magnetic Melong is probably better than this. Oh yeah, did I mention this is magnetic? I barely noticed just because of how flimsy it is. I can't imagine how it would be if it didn't have magnets. Okay, why is it 
designed like this. Like it's hard to it's hard to even take a center cap off, and it seems like it seems like they designed for the sole purpose of having this come off. It's just a normal screw, so nothing interesting. Yeah, this is just like bad design. It's harder to use and it's ugly. Hmm. Does this remind you of any other company? A blue accessories box. Let's see what's in it. Maybe there's a screwdriver. Would you look at that? So I'm not saying that the Dianxing copied the Moyu Meilong. As you can see, they're pretty different. Some parts of the pieces look kind of really similar, but some other parts are pretty different. But what I am saying is the Dianxing's pieces fit perfectly inside the Moyu Meilong. But nah, they probably didn't copy them. This is the 2x2, and it's, of course, it's pretty good, like a lot of 2x2s, but it's uh, pretty bad compared to the other 2x2s. Uh, the reason is just like these weird lockups where I'm not sure what's happening, and it's most likely one of the pieces on the inside getting caught on something on the inside, so I can't see it, but this locks up a lot as I'm just trying to do normal turns. And 2x2 definitely should not have these problems, especially for being magnetic. The 4x4 feels a little bit similar, where if, especially if you turn two layers at once, you can feel the internal pieces getting caught on each other. If you turn the outer layers, it's mostly fine. And while it's like not the best, um, it's not too bad for a 4x4. Although I definitely wouldn't recommend this as the Meilong is much better. The 5x5 is actually kind of okay. It doesn't have that same issue just because it's an odd number cube and odd number cubes don't have in internal pieces, all the pieces you see are all the pieces that there are. So this actually turns a little bit better, uh, but it's again, not as good as the Meilong. This is not really about this cube though. The Meilong is just amazing. Next, we have two new Qi budget cubes. These are non-magnetic and actually quite a throwback to when these sorts of cubes were the best budget cubes, but of course now we have really good ones. So this is the Qi Qi DS2. Um, which is interesting just because uh, they already had S to mean like really good, I guess, but then they added two, uh, which I'm actually okay with just because S2 makes a heart and that's cute. But yeah, this is pretty much what I expected. It is not great. As you can see, the corner cutting 45, less than 45, even less. There you go. Also, I don't know why Chi does this with their budget cubes, but the color shades are really weird. I really don't like this blue just because I'm not used to it having all the other cubes that I have. Also, the green is super light, but I don't think my camera's picking it up properly. Then there's also the Chi Fan S2 6x6. There was actually a time when the Chi Fan was a pretty good 6x6 for being a budget cube. Aw, oh, jeez, what year is it? This reminds me of the first time I actually got a 6x6 and entered a competition with it, and I think I barely qualified for the second round. That 6x6 is probably better than this one, honestly. Okay, this is just like a relic of history. I don't think it's worth getting this for any reason. And I don't think you're gonna learn any good turning habits on this either, because it's just gonna be really difficult and you're gonna spend a lot more of your hand strength trying to stabilize all the layers as you're turning. I think it's probably fine to learn on a magnetic 6x6 if you want to be fast, just because you're gonna get used to the turning a lot more, as magnets make quite a big difference on big cubes. I'll put a video up here you can click on if you wanna know what are the best cubes you can get for different price ranges. And also, I still can't get over it, you'd think they just Google a picture of a basketball before making their product. Well, I guess Google is banned in China.